open the spigot of your bathtub with the drain closed, what happens? The bathtub fills up. You open the spigot of your bathtub with the drain open, but the drain doesn't work so well because of a clog of hair. What happens? Well, the bathtub will fill, though maybe not as quickly because some water is draining out. That's exactly the situation we now have regarding the amount of carbon we're putting into the atmosphere every day. We're putting in more than nature can drain. The result is that the amount of carbon in the atmosphere continues to rise. But it's actually a bit more complicated. The rate at which we're pumping carbon into the atmosphere is increasing. Relative to the bathtub analogy, what this means is this. We're still opening up the spigot. So water keeps coming out faster and faster. International treaties are now aimed at helping us just to slow the rate at which we are opening the spigot. But we're still opening the spigot. It's a first step, and it's actually been working. Look how this graph shows curtailing carbon emissions in recent years. See this dip right here? That was the Great Recession. This is measurable. But you'll note the graph is still sloped upward. If we were to take our hands off the spigot so as to stop opening it up, that is, if we held to the current rates of carbon emission, we'd still be in a scenario where the bathtub water level is rising. We're putting in more carbon than nature can drain. What's ultimately needed is for us to start closing the spigot to start reducing the amount of CO2 we produce. And that's a tall order. We're having trouble right now getting countries to agree just to stop opening the spigot, let alone take their hands completely off the spigot or actually start turning it down. Why? Why should we turn it down? It's very true. A change in climate can be a good thing. Growing seasons in the Great Plains of Canada, for example, are now a full two weeks longer than they were prior to the 1950s. That's pretty cool. At the same time, the Arctic ice cap is steadily withering away. Wait, uh, that opens up new shipping lanes across the Arctic Ocean. Not bad either. While it's wonderful to focus on the positive, you've also got to face the potential negatives. We're an adaptable species, no doubt. Gradual changes in climate may be absolutely no problem for many. There are always winners and losers, right? If only it were that simple. It's not. Listen up. What we're finding is that climate shifts of the past tend to be less than gradual. It's more typical that some event occurs that triggers a relatively sudden shift through what we call a positive feedback loop. This is where a small effect gets amplified to a much larger effect. This is the opposite of what we call a negative feedback loop, which is a zone of stability. It's where any rapid change is prevented by opposing forces. Let's look at examples, starting with the negative feedback loop. The planet gets warmer. This causes more evaporation in the oceans, which leads to greater humidity, which leads to greater cloud cover. The greater cloud cover causes the planet to cool back down. So it is. You have stability. The temperature can never rise on average because there's a mechanism in place that causes it to cool right back down if it ever did. This example is just one of many negative feedback loops now operating on our planet, keeping things stable. Negative feedback loops are awesome for when you're liking how things are. Then there are the more zany, positive feedback loops. The planet gets warmer. This causes a thawing of tundra found in high latitudes. The thawing tundra produces methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas. This causes the temperatures to rise even further, which causes the thawing of more tundra, which causes the release of even more methane, which causes more warming, which causes more tundra to thaw, and so on. The end result is a rapid and pronounced increase in temperature. When all the negative feedback loops outweigh the positive feedback loops, we have a relatively stable climate. But when just one of the positive feedback loops gains dominance, it can trigger other positive feedback loops. For example, the thawing tundra makes it warmer. That then allows for more humid but cloudless skies. Recall, water vapor is a strong greenhouse gas. 
Without the clouds, the planet just keeps getting warmer, triggering even more positive feedback loops, such as the melting of polar snow and ice. Snow and ice reflect sunlight, helping to keep us cool. If it melts, this exposes the ground, which absorbs sunlight to help make things even warmer, and so on, in a cascade, all resulting in a dramatic climate shift occurring within a relatively short time period, like decades or centuries. It may start slowly, but once it takes hold, the shift accelerates to what we call a runaway climate change. Casual climate change may be good for some, but runaway climate change, that's a different story, and generally bad for all. Except, a nuclear bomb is quick, resulting in devastation that is immediately clear. The advantage here is that there's not much room for debate as to whether it's happening or not. Kaboom. Huh. Runaway climate change holds the potential for an equal amount of devastation. But if a nuclear bomb is a bullet, then runaway climate change is more like a slow-acting poison. You're not going to know for sure whether that sweet-tasting syrup is good or bad until maybe too late. This is a problem. We tend not to appreciate change when it's slow and incremental. A new building here one year, a new building there another. That's okay, but eventually pastures are replaced by city traffic. Gosh, think of how we age. A wrinkle here one year, <laughs> another wrinkle there the next. That gives us time to adjust, which is nice. We can be fatalistic and say, well, that's just the way it is. Or we can be proactive. Wait a second. There should be zoning laws to prevent the loss of farmland. Hey, smoking accelerates wrinkle formation. I think I'll stop smoking. And further, I think I'll become a chemist so I can invent collagen crosslink inhibitors, which will sell like hotcakes. Attitude is important. But the first step is to recognize the potential problem. Only then are we in a position for the second step, which is to see what can and should or should not be done. We are crafty and clever. As we explore in the next chapter, there are many energy alternatives superior in many ways to fossil fuels. Humans are now the number one geologic force on this planet, which is easy to see outside the airplane window. And of course, with great power, comes great responsibility. Thank you for your willingness to learn more about the issue of fossil fuel-induced climate change. I'm afraid we've only scratched the surface. But properly approached, the challenges we face may well push us to some amazing innovations, especially when it comes to our energy sources. But further, it may serve as a catalyst, pushing us to work together, cooperatively, as good stewards of this one planet, home to us all. Good chemistry to you. Mm -hmm.